welcome to the Buildology Podcast. I'm Perry. I'm Randy. I'm Matt. I'm Justin. We're going to help you become a Buildologist. Perry, Randy, Mac, and Justin have a combined 100 plus years of experience in the building and real estate industry. And now they bestowed that experience to you to help you become Buildologists. This is the Buildology Podcast. We've got building down to a science. Very how was your week so far? So far so good. Made a few sales, got some investors lined up. Yeah. And okay profits. guys, I've got the live. We're live. We're, we're live. We're, we're live. live. We're live. We're live. We're live. We're live. live. We're live. Number one. Oh yeah. Okay. Hey, uh, everybody. The today's show in our our multitude of shows is show number. Hang on. Let me carry the one. Fourteen thousand. Have the moon back. This is show number one. It's number one. The first podcast. The very first podcast. Right. Super exciting. And the first step. First we're, step. We're going to save the best for last, right? I guess so. So I'll go last. <laughs> but no, I'll go first. Hey, so who who's with me? Am I right to say that being successful in the real estate industry is probably the easiest thing you've ever done in your entire life? Who's with me on that? Absolutely (laughs) not. That's unanimous on that right now. So people should just listen to our successes and make it into their own. Is that the whole point of this? (laughs) Is correct? Well, they should listen and then make it their own. Yes. Yes, you could say, but you would also be right in saying that I'm wrong about that statement. It Uh, is not one of the easiest things in the world to do. No, this, no. this is true. And sometimes the most valuable lessons are the ones that you learn when you don't hit that level of success that you're striving for. That is true. That is true. But today, since this being our first podcast, we should probably give people a reason why they would want to sit down and listen to us. So today, what I want to do is concentrate a little bit on our backgrounds and what brought us to this point. So, I mean, I'll throw it over to Justin and go, Justin. What, where have you been and how did you end up here today? Well, I, I actually started in this industry when I was 19 years old. And um, my wife and I got married a week after graduating high school. And a week after that, we passed our real estate exam, both of us, and went to work selling real estate lots and custom homes for a family business. So that, that's uh, 27 years now in the industry. 27. 27 years. So, uh, you know, that. I, I, I think I look younger. <laughs> I, I don't know I'm not sure if I feel younger. <laughs> but this industry has a way to age you, so <laughs> yeah, it's hard to exactly. tell, I guess. So, I guess so, so. Perry, why don't, why don't you start off by telling us uh, how, how you got into the industry? When did you get into the it, Actually, it was, it was 1979. It was a year before okay. I graduated from high school. Okay. And a tornado wiped out Wichita Falls, very oh. near my hometown. And I worked all summer building houses. I was a wow. constru- I was just a laborer. Okay. And I always wanted to be the guy. We showed up every morning. There was a guy come out of the trailer with a cowboy hat on, white shirt, and boots and jeans. And I always wanted to be that guy because <laughs> I was the guy doing all the work. Yeah. And I thought I want to be that guy someday. Yeah. And then after University of Texas, and then coming to Houston and so forth, I became that guy. Wow, that, that's great. That's, that's how great. it all started. How about you, Mac? For me, it was also 1979. Uh, What a great year. Look at that. It was a wonderful year. (laughs) Um, And interestingly enough, I uh, had a journalism major and uh, realized that everyone I knew with that same major was going back to work uh, making virtually no money whatsoever. So a good friend of mine that worked for a rather large home builder um, said, hey, you ought to try this out. So why not? I took a shot at it, and uh, the rest is history. So I've been at it for, like Perry, for 41 years now. So 41 years, Mac. Perry, 41 years, 27 years. How about you, Randy? When did you start here? Well, let's see. This year starts my 29th year (laughs) in the industry, and and my story is not unsimilar to everybody else's. I graduated college in 92 and uh, moved to Austin, and um, my first foray into new construction, the building real estate industry was, I had a good friend of mine that was working for a local builder. And so it was a small family owned place. So I got to know the, the group of people that ran that, that company real well. 
you know, started out, this is the days before fax machines. Oh, so yeah. my first job was yeah. after my regular job, I would go there and take the hey, company Mac. truck. <laughs> he said first before uh, fax, fax machines, machines, not Pony Express. Exactly. So. <laughs> Yes. Like, like, we didn't have fax machines. Yeah. When I went to school, we didn't have computers. Didn't. I, don't, I don't think Michael Dell was even born yet. That's that was when fun. you had to dial phones by the, uh, oh, yeah. the little princess phones back yeah. then. Yeah. The, the upgrade was not to have black. <laughs> that, that, that was, was the upgrade. Was, yeah. was it the started upgrade. out on thermal paper, too, which made everything disappear. <laughs> yeah. I remember my phone number started with letters. <laughs> <laughs> GR1. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's a history lesson right there. That is, there you were know, only four it, digits actually. <laughs> here we are in 2021, February 2021, starting this episode off, and you know that to to say that we're using today's technology and YouTube, and we're starting off the on the podcast with Mac telling a story about a phone number with that starts with letters. Yeah, <laughs> so it shows how far we've come. That's how far it, we've it, come. Exactly. So it also kind of highlights the experience sitting at this table here. So um, that's one of the things that I think we really wanted to show off and uh, help our listeners that listen to the podcast, also watch it on YouTube, you know, that may not have had the luxury of being in the industry this long to share some information yep. from a few guys here that have done it for a number of years. And, you know, Perry's the uh, local math wizard here. I, I, I can attest for the three that are on this side of the table. Um, we're not the math geniuses in our head, but I have 41 years, right? 41 yep. years, yes. 41 years, 29 years, and 27 years. All I know is that's more than 100 years of experience. It definitely. That <laughs> is true. Sitting at this table. No, no, that is true. That's a three-digit mm. number. Right that's there. a three-digit sure. number right there. Yeah. So, and I, I think when you get this far into the industry, you realize that you don't know everything. And I think getting into the industry when you're young, um, that was the first thing I was like, oh, I, I know it all. <laughs> you know, I, I've built a house. I've done this. I, you feel like you can conquer the world. And I think this industry with the highs and the lows that everyone here can attest to that uh, it's, that's not always the case, recognizing how difficult it can be. You know, the, the, you biggest, know, the biggest lesson, the, I was going to say, the biggest lesson that the people that are listening need to learn is to learn from us. Learn from, yeah. we didn't just inherit this gray hair. We earned right. it. <laughs> yes, that's and, for sure. And through experience. And what I find talking to younger people in the business today is that they think they know everything and they don't. And yeah. they're going to make mistakes. And so right. they can learn from our mistakes over the 41 years. Yeah. And they can learn a lot. Now, we, we are always learning. We're always finding ways to learn new things. Yeah, I don't know what the Webster de definition of uh, experience it is, but, but I know what mine is, and it's trying not to do things wrong a second time. <laughs> that's <is laughs> so true. That, that's, uh, that's how I define experience is because we've made a number of mistakes, and learning from uh, those mistakes is what basically gets you to the places you want to go, go, the experience that... I'm not doing that again because that was painful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I know that we've all been to college here and we've all paid that bill, but I guarantee you this industry right here can uh, be a lot more costly than a college education. <laughs> Many you times. better over. believe that. <laughs> and, you know, one of the things, too, though, is as I reflect back and, and look over my career, uh, one of the things that really strikes me is the fact that even though technology has changed tremendously during that period of time, this is still... Mm -hmm a people business. It's, uh, it's, it's back to basics. It's, uh, don't forget those lessons that you learned early on in your career and you can keep applying them. They still have value. Yeah. That's a fantastic point, Mac. And it's basically one of the fundamentals of why we wanted to do this podcast is that technology has brought us closer together through social media and YouTube and podcast and things like that, but it's also created a divide. And I think that we can tell like, you and Perry are pretty much the masters of sales when it comes in. I mean, I've sold my share of real estate and, you know, fed my family in real estate, but I definitely defer to sales to you guys in doing this. Um, but sales is that one-on-one -on -one personality that you have to be able to establish a relationship with someone. And social media, a lot of times, I feel like can be a distance. You know, texting doesn't communicate that face-to-face -face experience that when you enter this transaction with someone, the biggest purchase of their life, they want to know that there's a human on the other end of that. Better believe it. How about you, Randy? Tell, tell us about one of the, one of the 
key takeaways uh, of your career so far? I mean, no, you just talk about technology. That's kind of where it is. And, and, you know, on, on the con- new construction side of things, which is where I've spent most of, most of my time, is that um, technology's changed our products and, our, and some of our processes, and it's changed definitely the way we communicate how we do our job to each other. But just like you said, at the end of the day, it's still people putting this together, and it's the person-to-person relationships that can get lost in the technology. So I think the key to moving it forward is, is making sure we maintain you know, the, the personable side of this and not so much the technological side. It's good. It helps us go forward, but it's still people that do it. And yeah. It's those relationships I, that make it go forward. I, I totally agree, Randy. And I think, too, that one of the real benefits of this podcast is the fact that we are real people. I mean, we've been there. We've been in the trenches for a lot of years, and we've probably seen everything that you could see <laughs> in this crazy industry. And, uh, and again, that's the thing that I, I, I feel very confident that we can impart to, uh, to the folks that are watching these podcasts. Yeah, and I think the, the tools of today, if we use them to communicate a message that people can take into their real life and use in that person-to-person transaction, because all of us know at this table right here that this is an industry, and I, I hear a lot of people with a not a clear understanding of what real estate and building is from outside of our industry because they their introduction into it is someone trying to sell them a get-rich-quick scheme. You know, come to this seminar and learn how to do real estate in a weekend at a Marriott. I, that, that's not realistic. That's the only one getting rich in that example is the guy that's, you know, people are paying several hundred dollars to go get a seat there. He's closed a couple of transactions in his life and he's bought a room at a Marriott and is good at advertising. <laughs> and, you know, Justin, along those lines, I've had people ask me many times over the years, they know that I went to school to study architectural engineering. And they say, if you're an engineer, why didn't you, why don't you practice engineering? Right. And I've told them because I can't make nearly the amount of money as an engineer as I right. can as a home builder. Exactly. But at the same time, people say, well, if it, Anybody can build a home. Anybody stacking blocks, right? right? Anybody can do that. And I asked him, "Have you ever done it before?" Because yeah. if you haven't, you're in for a rude awakening. Yeah. And if you're married, you won't be by the time you finish. <laughs> exactly. It's simple as that. <laughs> because it's it's a con- <clears throat> it's a totally consuming industry and environment. And you never know. You got to be quick on your feet. You have to be able to take a curveball at any time. Get hit from left field, and you got to be ready to respond. Yeah. And you can't, if you don't have the knowledge or you don't have the resource, that's mainly what we succeed with at this table. We have a network, we have resources. We can call on somebody to find the answer. And none of us are too ego driven to right. not be willing to ask questions. Yeah, as we start this podcast, you know, I think it's important for us to kind of take that 30,000 foot view as people, you know, just come and find what this is and who we are that we start out this really high level view and kind of get down into the minutia um, and showing them that the there it's not just knowing the detail a lot of times is knowing the right person that can deliver that result and this is really a people business and as much technology is out there at the end of the day it isn't going to get that house built it's not coming off an assembly line I was in Louisiana last week and I was talking with a mortgage company there and they made a comment about they meet less than 5% of their customers in today's world because everything is done remotely. Everything's Mm -hmm. done electronically. Right. I understand that that speeds up the process, but imagine what they're losing in understanding what is it, what's the goal of that person they're talking to? What are you trying to accomplish? You don't see that in an application. You don't see that on an email back and forth. Right. You can't see the commitment that they have in their face and in their eyes. How devoted are you and how committed are you to make this happen? Yeah. And that's what you lose. And, you know, this also, to Justin's point, this is still a a, a people business. And because of that, um, there's also, you know, you got to make room to make mistakes as well. Because as long as people are involved, mistakes are going to happen. Whether they're, you know, generated by yourself from outside outside your control or just you go down the wrong road and you don't know you're there until you're at the end of it. So, you know, the whole idea, you know, in, in my mind with this is to, is, at least in my world, to use those mistakes to other people's advantage. Like talk about some of the failures that we've had, not specifically, but some of the roads where you've learned so much. And 
I, I say this every day to any of the people that I still that I work with out in the field is that I there's not a day go by a day go by goes by that I don't learn something new in this yeah. industry, and people that are around me learn something new too just by doing the day to day transactions and the conversations that go with that. Yeah, I think a lot of people don't understand is that. Um, they don't understand our industry. We're, we're basically off-site manufacturing. And to your point, Randy, is it's a subcontractor-based industry that does this. And every day, we're talking to experts. They're, they're experts in this one little thing that they do. They might not understand the whole process of building a house and all that stuff, but they are experts in what they do. And I laugh a lot of times... A window into our industry is television, and I won't name TV shows, but, you know, the average consumer of a house watches a TV show, and they see that this all happened in one day, right? They don't see the six months of just planning those those shots that we're going to line up in the staff of TV crew and everything to plan that one day out and all the vendors and owners of company that have their name on the line to make sure it happens in that one day when we've got people out there that make it happen day after day after day after day, but they make one very specific thing happen. And our job is to pull all those together and understand that, hey, if it doesn't go right, what's the result of that? And those, on those shows that you're speaking of, there's editing involved. Correct. So they put the wrong, they put the tile in the wrong place first, yeah. and then they tear it out and they have to fix it again. Yeah. And they may or may not include that in the shot. They may or may not tell you about that. Right. So the biggest challenge in our industry is the word perfect. Yes. There's no such thing no. as the perfect house. You yeah, stated yeah. earlier about being a, a people thing. These are homes built by humans for humans. Nothing's going to be perfect. Yeah, if you're expecting perfection, you will be disappointed 100% of the time. And that's yeah. just truly the case is because we're dealing with people, uh, first of all. And then a lot of what we do is we're dealing with other nature-made products. And those yeah. things just aren't perfect all the time. So yeah. perfection is, is a high expectation that is, I mean, realistically, just not really ever achieved. Well, that's and, a- and I also want to tie, tie another point in uh, when you're talking about perfection and, and all the emotion that is brought into home building. Um, you know, we're talking to a lot of, and we're addressing a lot of investors and investor groups out there through this podcast. And there is a significant difference between the emotional level of the actual home buyer, husband, and wife, partner, partner, they're going to be living in that home versus the investor that's going to either be leasing it or renting it out. So, you know, that's, that's where a lot of the stress has come into play is when you're selling the, the individual home. Well, and owner. you said the key. The key is to the investor, it's a business. It's a business, exactly. To the customer, it's a home. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're kind of really the only product in America that, that crosses these two things that, you know, this is something that you're going to raise your kids in, create memories with, and all, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, when it comes down to it, the investor knows that it's a dollars and cents thing. Right. And it is to those people but it isn't that dollars and cents until their life changes and they decide to sell it. And then it becomes a dollars and cents thing. But in, before that, it's not. Right. Very true. Very true. So, uh, Randy, you mentioned something earlier, kind of getting into the product thing. And that, that kind of leads me to a segue into what we wanted to do in the show. And we're not going to do it specifically today, but we're going to bring every week, you know, a couple products that we deal with in the industry that we feel like would bring value to someone out there in some form or fashion. And it could be a specific industry. It could be a segment. Um, it could be the whole industry. And I, I think what we're going to try to do is, you know, we don't want to spend a whole show on diving down into one specific product, but if we just have little segments and then we'll go out there and throw it on the website or a link in the YouTube description so where people can find that product and that thing and get more information and then reach out to us in the comment section. Hey, you know, what do you think of this or how does it compare to that? And we'll have an avenue and a discussion there in the comment section. So if anyone out there listening if you're listening on the podcast, go out and find the YouTube channel and we'll throw stuff down in the comment section and we'll, we'll challenge you to go out there and ask questions, leave funny comments. I mean, I'm sure there's some, there's some people out there who will not leave great comments, but uh, Randy had a good point when we were talking about this of uh, having some winners and losers. <laughs> yeah, I just thought it's, it's, 
uh, with this, with technology and social media and all that. So you, you kind of get it coming from all sides. So I thought we'd take some, like we have like best comment of the week or, or best question of the week or, yeah. or right. wildest question of the week and start and highlighting mm-hmm. some of, you know, the feedback that we get and just kind of dive into the, you know, some of the comments that we get and, 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 and highlight some of that stuff. Yeah. Well, and as I said before, we've got to be in the industry. You have to be quick on your feet. You have to be flexible. We want to know what the customers want. Yes. And that's the biggest question that we ask right. as a sales team is what are you looking to accomplish? What is your goal? And so the, for the viewers that are watching this, we want to know what are they trying to accomplish? Give right. us information that you would like to know about right. because with the wealth of knowledge at this table, we can answer those questions. Yeah, the answer is the answers at this table. <laughs> that, right. that, that we know yeah, the answers right. at this table, and yeah. you know, I think we all have as the shows go along. I think listeners will kind of start to understand, like, oh, okay, you know, this person fills this role, this person fills this role. We all we all at this table, we're sitting here for a reason because we've all been successful in this industry, and there's slightly different areas of success, and so we all lean on each other for that. And by the way, you said earlier, you talked about, did you say 27 and 29? Mm-hmm. That's a, but between all of us, that's 130 years. Wow. That only took you about half the show to get there. So well, I know, but I didn't job. have a chance earlier. I mean, yeah. the number was tumbling Listen, in my Listen, all head, I know, it was more than 100. <laughs> it feels like Barry, a, Barry didn't want to show up. <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to show up. He <laughs> didn't want to show up. Some days it just feels I'm in it for 130 years. <laughs> yeah. that, so. That's for sure. And actually, yeah. it, it, exactly, it's 137, quite frankly. That's great. Okay. I love it. <laughs> I'm sure someone will correct us in the comments below. <laughs> they will. Probably, probably. probably. So back we're, to your point, it. Randy, on the comments below, um, you know, I think there, we got to have like the best comment of the week and the worst comment of the week. And, you know, maybe we can give them a T-shirt or stuff. Yeah, you know, I figured we'd the pull, month or pull something. something out of the swag bag yeah. for, for yeah, challenging yeah, us exactly. and maybe not challenging yeah, us. Yeah, so I, I figured like since this is our first show and we don't have listeners going back and listening, uh, uh, someone in the future will hear this first show yeah. and then there'll be comments below and stuff. So we kind of got to like set the bar. So I was looking at some comments, you know, on YouTube and I, I laughed at, you know, so, some of these things are so off the chart that we got to prepare ourselves for. And the best one I saw recently was a guy out there and uh, he was commenting on the on the guy doing the show. Right. And he said, now, this guy's really going somewhere. And the very first comment was Guantanamo. <laughs> so, like, he's going to prison. He's going right. to prison. Yeah. You know, one guy had the greatest intent in the world. It was a compliment. He's like, hey, this guy's really going somewhere. In the very first comment, Guantanamo. Everyone's an expert behind the keyboard, Justin. <laughs> exactly. Everyone's an expert behind so, the keyboard. So as we prepare ourselves for those comments, you know, hey, we'll pull out the winner and we'll grab the swag bag and uh, we'll, we'll get some uh, Buildology shirts. And, uh, well, and the good news is, too, everyone should stay tuned because we've already got a complete clip of uh, wonderful bloopers, I'm sure, that we can probably I'm, I'm, hear I'm at a later sure. date. I'll let you date. Yeah, so we're going to get all those bloopers. <laughs> and after all, we, all, we, we all have all been or all our, our builders, so we've all been shot at. We've all, yeah, yeah. everyone's yeah. taking their exactly. shots at us. That's, that's okay. That's Listen, an entire future segment. <laughs> there's that's a whole right. segment on getting chased down the road and everyone gets to add by what? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> by what? Or by Randy, whom? I'm telling you, I've heard Randy's story and I don't, he gets the award. None of us can top it because I've heard the story, but that's definitely a segment we're going to go through just because I want to hear him talk about this on the air at some okay. point in time. Well, and of course, now you have our interest. <laughs> we up, have so. definitely have our interest. It's the best story I've ever heard. <laughs> and I've I've had some crazy stuff chase me down the road, and when I heard that one, I was like, I can't hold a candle to it. That was <laughs> early in my career too, so I probably handled that differently today. But we'll get into that right, at another time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so a whole get chased down the road by something segment is coming. <laughs> hey, just just yesterday, I had a cement truck top over on a job. So oh, you know, it's wow. all new things every day. So. Every, every day, yep. yeah. Oh. I've, I almost had a pump truck go into Lake Conroe. Okay, we don't want to yeah. scare any investors. We don't want to scare any investors. Yeah, that's, that's, just, yeah. It's that's, that's the that's construction true. side. So, okay, so we kind of talked about introducing products and stuff. The other thing um, I think Perry and Matt could attest to is it, it's sales 101, okay, is knowing your customer, right? And I think a lot of times people forget 101. You know, they, they're worried about the detail of this or the detail of that. And at the end of the day, sales one one, you got to know who your customer is. And so I think this is a pretty good place right here to help people understand who their customer is. Because in different situations, if you're talking to an investor, 
That's different than if you're talking to someone that's buying their house for themselves. The end customer may be different. It could be a rental. But, you know, at the same time, if I can mm. jump in, it's not because the questions are the same. Why are you here? Yeah, that's What true. caused you to call me today? <clears throat> if it's an investor, they're looking for a return on their investment. Yeah. Are they looking for 30%, 20%, right. 15%? Are you trying to avoid capital gains? So you want to get in and out quick? Right. Are you looking for a long-term investment, short-term investment? Same thing with home buyers. Why, yeah. why are you giving up your Saturday when you can be watching football? Right. Probably not the Texans, but yeah. you can be watching <laughs> yeah, football. That's true. Why would you be giving up your Sunday <laughs> coming into a model home or spending time with a realtor? What's yeah. motivating you to buy a new home? There, there's a reason for that. And, you know, a long time ago, I think it was back in the early 80s, one of the early sales trainers that – you know, I had the the pleasure of uh, sitting through a through a long seminar with one of the most important things I think he said that day was uh, everybody wakes up listening to the same radio station, and that's W I I F M. What's in it for me? Yeah, that's and I true. think we need to always remember that with any customer that we're dealing with is that you know we've got to focus on what's what's going to be good for them, what's in it for them. And unfortunately, salespeople don't listen to the answer. Yeah. We're too busy talking. We want to hear a head roar. We want to, we're thinking of the next question before we even hear the answer to the question right. we've asked. And if we ask them and we shut up and listen and just say, what's in it for you? What are you looking for? What right. is your goal? And then you truly listen. Yeah. And by the way, it helps yeah. not only with selling homes. It helps with selling anything. It helps with relationships. It helps yeah. with your wife. Yeah. Truly listen. I am, I am so glad you brought that up, Perry, because again, I think if, if you have your, your heart in the right place, your head's going to fall in line with it. And, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's where it gets back into doing the right thing all the time. You can't always be looking at how much commission can I make? You know, what's my profit going to be in this deal? While that is important, you can't focus on that. You've got to be looking at how you can truly help your customer. And one of the consultants, as you mentioned before, that I listen to from time to time, said helping other people achieve their goals will help you achieve your goals. Yeah. Simple as that. That is very basic. Very yeah. basic. Simple, yeah. simple truth. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, focusing at that, like I said, that 30,000 foot view and letting people never forget who, who the customer is and what that end result, you know, like you were talking about, that commission will come if you satisfy all the needs of that person right there in whether it's an investor or someone buying that home for themselves, those things all come by satisfying the wants and needs of that person. And I tell you the very best trainer on the earth is a child because yeah. what do they say all the time? Why? Time yeah. to go to bed. Why? Yeah. Can't have that. Why? Why not? Be the child, be the person that's asking why. Why did you show up today? Why are you looking to buy a new home? Why are you wanting to move? Why are you moving to the city? Ask yeah. why and yeah. learn from yeah. a child. The best trainer in the world is a small child. And like you said, just then you have to just shut up and listen. That's key. Yeah. That's key because too many you, of us want to continue to talk. You got two ears, one mouth, and there's a reason. Well, mm -hmm. my kids certainly trained me at a young age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they true. have all of us. <laughs> they They've trained, trained us all. all. Yeah. Yeah. So another... Big topic, you know, as we talk about that 30,000 foot view is you've got the client out there. But then the other thing you have to react to is, you know, we've all been in this industry a long time and understanding the environment that you're in um, is, is super important. So your client is coming to you for a reason. And if your knowledge is based on what happened in 1990 and why people moved in 1990 and you've never you know, read a new book or paid attention to trends or things like that, you're not going to understand the needs of this person right, right here. You have to be current. There's you, no have to be current. you have to be current. So I think a part of the show that we should do is help people, help people be current and current can take a lot of forms. I mean, it could come in the form of an economic situation, uh, interior design type of an architectural design, um, a reason to move to a city and leave another city. Um, there, there's just a lot of things in our industry because we're talking about someone moving, right? And there's a lot of factors out there. So if you're not current on what's going on and constantly trying to be like uh, a doctor going out there and getting continuing education, your, your information is going to get stale. And then you're going to wonder why you're not making an income in this industry. Yep. No, that just goes <clears> to, to Perry's point is that you're always in you know, the best trainers or children are always asking why. You know, the answer to why it, coming from the environment changes a lot. Like during 
right now during the time of uh, us recording this podcast show number one, <laughs> you know, mortgage rates are at an all time low right now. Yeah. That is a lot of today is why some people. It's a good motivator. Yeah, it's, it's a, a good motivator, motivator to come out. Yeah. And just understanding the environment that you're in can can you know, help you move forward and in, in, in understanding the word why when you're getting in front of something. And yeah. think about it, put it in perspective. 2020, you've been yeah. trapped in your home. We've not right. been able to walk outside and breathe oxygen because right. it's going to kill us all. So we're all, everyone has been trapped in their environment. And so looking at those same four walls every day has motivated them to say, I might want to change these walls. Yeah. And now's a good time because the interest rates, as you stated, are lower than they've ever been. Mortgages can be easier to obtain than they've ever been. And so put it in perspective and just say, if you're asking why and you're asking where do you live now and what's motivating you to move forward, they're going to tell you. You know, it's interesting that, that right now mortgage rates are at all-time lows. You flip that on the other side in the new construction world, lumber prices are at an all-time high. Right. And at least in, since 2012 right, right now. Yep. Yesterday, they closed at the highest points of 2012. Yeah. So you combine low mortgage rates with extremely high lumber prices, and that's a logjam yeah. when it comes got, to buying new. You've got such a, a huge supply and demand imbalance right now. And again, fear is driving that. There are a lot of people who are very concerned that these interest rates are going to climb. They, most people do know that the, the uh, cost of construction is going up. So, yeah, that fear of loss is really motivating a lot of people to get off the fence. So that leads and, me and, kind of uh, into the... I was going to say along those same lines, because what do we see the most of under construction today? Multifamily housing. We see apartments. We see yeah. townhomes. And the reason yeah. being is that the, the people that are renting out properties are getting the best price because there's not inventory available in houses. So yeah. I know I have children that are paying $1,500 a month for a one-bedroom apartment. Yeah. And at the same time, you can get a home for $1,500 a month. But the problem is the homes aren't available. The inventory is down, yeah. the apartments are up, and the rents are up. Well, not to mention that, um, you know, when you, when you start talking about rents and where homes are, like this, as long as we've been in the industry, uh, what I see is we've never been in this position where the gap from that starter home, we can all remember when a starter home was under a hundred thousand, yeah, 75,000, 75,000. I'm sure you guys remember, you know, a different point in time than that, but that, that was my, you know, when it crossed a hundred thousand dollars, we were like, Oh wow, a hundred thousand dollar starter home. Okay. That's, you know, now the price keeps going up but the wages aren't going up at the same rate. And so that down payment becomes a, a real struggle for that first time home buyer. And I think you see a, a big decision there to rent. And that's something that's like an evolving thing in our market where, you know, banks, because of the last time we went through this, you know, everyone calls it a recession. I call it the great depression and home building. Uh, if you were in selling cars, it was a recession, but if you were in home building, it was a depression. It was the end of the world. <laughs> it, was the, it was the end of the world. Yes, right. So yes. coming out of that, you know, banks tightened up and they, they wanted you to have some skin in the game when you bought that house. Right. And sure. all the rules changed and all that. And so that down payment became a really big deal. I mean, prior to that, all of us sitting at this table, the bank, basically, if you could fog a mirror, they were giving you a loan. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I hate to say that, but that's, that's true. I mean, it was, it was so easy to get a loan and those days are gone. And then now tightening up and trying to get someone a down payment on a starter home becomes a challenge. And so I think you see the market kind of changing and adapting and trying to figure out a way to deal with that. And I think brand new rental homes is something that's that's evolving. And what and I would say though is don't give up because if you're a first time home buyer, there are programs, there are grant programs, yeah. there are down payment assistance programs, but in addition there's lease to own programs. Yes. So it depends on your motivation. If right. you're if your motivation is to buy that home and live there for five years or ten years yeah. and you want to own it, you want the tax advantages, yeah. don't give up. Right. Ask the people like people at this table, we can refer right. you to somebody because yeah. there are mortgage professionals that can get you in that home. Yeah. Or there are private yeah. equity investors that can provide that down payment for you and can have a way to do that. So Where there's a will, there's a way. Leads me to the, you know, what we're talking about here is a part of the show that I thought would be really interesting. And, you know, I was calling it conjecture time. So, you know, we were talking about news that's affecting our industry. I think one of the things that we're just kind of talking about here is kind of conjecturing what is going to happen in the future and what we see and bringing listeners into that, um, if they're watching or listening in into that world, 
what does four experts in this industry think is going to happen in the future? Because a lot of this industry, like Randy, you talking about lumber prices, how do you react to that? If you're just a couch investor and you just dabble in this market every time, and the last time you did a flip or something was a year ago, and you go out there to price what lumber is today, there went your entire profit. That, that, that's gone. And so <laughs> dabbling in this industry will, will punish you severely. So that's, I think this show could be a, a, a big asset to someone that needs to get the information that is current and then also what is going to happen in the future. I think that should be a segment in the show that, hey, what do we think? You know, this happened to us. Uh, what is lumber doing? That's a big hot topic right now running around the construction side of the industry, and that runs through sales. And we've been through cycles like this before. This mm -hmm. isn't the first time this has happened. Yeah. Today is the best market in the history, to my knowledge, of the United States in real estate. Totally and, agree. Totally and, agree. And so, and all the experts are projecting for the next five years is going to continue to be great and everything's going to be strong. But it could change by one hurricane, by one significant factor in the United States. It can change and turn on a dime. Well, what can yeah. change all that is if the interest rates do start to climb significantly, because as we all know, you know, a, a, pretty good hike in the interest rate has a lot more impact than just a few thousand dollars in price increase. So that's the fear that I'm seeing that's driving a lot of these sales right now is people are trying to get out. We've got more people coming in uh, from other states, moving around from state to state, uh, changing their environment. And uh, so, yeah, it's uh, the, the future is going to be interesting. Yeah. And as we think about like the reach of Know, this podcast, we're, we're in Texas and we happen to be one of those markets where everyone's moving to, right? right. Um, but the converse is also true. I mean, if you're in a state that where people are leaving and you have investment property or you're building or you're flipping a house or something like that, you st that doesn't mean that uh, you, know, you can't do these things in there, right? You just need to become an expert in this industry and figure out how to do that. And you've got to be more curious. You've got right. to be able to spend, invest the time to learn and make those decisions. And again, get, surround yourself with success, not only successful people, but people that have the knowledge. Right. Stay in your lane. Someone once told me, stay in your lane. Don't try to be, if you're a builder, don't try to be the mortgage expert. Right. Find a mortgage expert. Right. Don't try to be the title expert. Find somebody with the title expertise yep. that can help you get the correct title commitment. Make sure there are no liens on the property, things of that nature. Yeah. Surround yourself with the right people. Yeah, this is an industry full of experts and in finding the right ones. A lot of times I think it's back to what you were saying, Mac, it's it's a personality thing is, you know, you want to find people that you can work with that kind of understand you and where you're coming. And if you don't understand the industry, you might pick the wrong person to do business with. They may be an expert in a specific field, but if you don't know enough, you may be asking them to do something that they aren't the expert in. Well, and I can make a good reference there. You're exactly right. Just because someone's done something for a long time doesn't mean they're good at it. Yes. You should see true. my golf swing. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect example. Well, yeah. you know, too, is, is all looking back at the five or six legal pages of, uh, of show content topics that we have written down. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we've got so much to offer to the investor, uh, whether it's an investor group or individual investors or, you know, People that are out looking for new homes uh, and, and home builders. I mean, there's so yeah. much that I think we can bring to the table for everybody. Well, there's there's definitely in, in on the new construction side, uh, there are obviously a lot of tricks that I know I've picked up over the years and Justin has too. And um, where you can kind of jump out ahead, uh, you can see things coming a little bit as far as maybe some hurdles in front of you and, and getting yeah. your job done effectively. And if we could, you know, if our experience helps people understand and see that and then yeah. they can plan accordingly, it'll just make things a lot smoother for them and, and be able to get around that's, that. That's a great point, Randy. And again, you know, the beauty of it is none of us have to stand alone. I mean, that's what I really love about working with all you guys is we've all got different experiences, even though we've been in the same industry and we can bounce these ideas off each other. So, you know, our listeners are going to be able to come to us and say, hey, have you guys had this situation? How, do, how did you guys respond to that? So yeah. and, I just think there's so much that we can offer. And we've all been through the highs and the lows. Yep. And, you know, I, I think going through the last low that was in the market, that was probably one of the lowest lows of all time. 
Yeah. And, and, and 2008, 2008, 2009. Uh, absolutely. I mean, unbelievable. And yeah. there's techniques and things that we did that is true to, to come through that market that even in a hot market like this, if you're in California right now, there, there's just a lot of people leaving California. True. Well, and, and think about this, that in today's market, a lot of mistakes are being made, but they're being covered up by the market. A hundred percent. Most people that I come in contact with realtors think they're the greatest realtor on the yeah. face of the earth because they did yeah. a, the highest number they've ever done last year. Right. When they don't realize that right. they were in the right place at the right time, right. they showed up. And yep. even though Yogi Berra said half of the winning is just showing up, yeah. just showing up right now, you're going to succeed. Yep. But can you make it in a down market? Are right. you doing the right things today? Yeah. Right, yeah. So if the average realtor is doing 10 million a year and you're doing 20 and you're doing the right things, but if the average realtor is doing 10 and you're doing 10, guess what? You're just average. And that's true for the builders. That's true for anyone, the rental people, the investors. Now's the time to excel, but you've got to do it correctly. Yeah. Well, when you're when when you're riding the wave of success, that does hide a lot of mistakes. It really does. But once that wave crashes down, at least when Justin referring to the last really bad you know, hole for the new construction industry, um, a lot of mistakes were being covered up because everything was just going like big gangbusters. But it, I feel like we had to go through that in order to uncover those mistakes that were happening. Yeah. And you and you realized that wasn't the right way to do it. So we changed the way we did our business um, to to allow ourselves when we had the next run up that we're, we're going to try to protect ourselves from those same mistakes that yeah. we were allowing to happen during that time. And that's yeah. what got the banks into trouble again True. back in the yeah. 80s, too, because, I mean, you know, they just thought this was going to go on forever. Yeah, the money tree would never die. Huh. Yeah. I can tell you a lot of professional athletes that I've known think that when they're yeah. making their 20 million a year, the money tree will never die. And that's why there's a high bankruptcy ratio for those folks because they don't see that blown out knee or that, uh, exactly. you know, and it can happen to all of us. It can happen to any one of sure. us. Sure. Anything can happen to hey, us. I, I blew metaphor. out my knee. It did affect my golf game. Yep. Okay. But I don't think it was at the same scale. I, I didn't retire. I just, I think I dropped down a league. My golf swing has been described as watching a wire coat hanger swing a golf club. <laughs> Apparently I have no joints when I swing a golf club. So maybe that'll be a video segment we do in a later, later show. I, I'll do the stupid comment and then my punishment will be you'll videotape my uh, yeah, golf swing. There we go. 100%. Hey, but I think in this show being show number one, Justin is in just a little segue mm -hmm. into is people probably wonder why the heck there is a cat with sunglasses behind us because so, I know I'm wondering that. <laughs> yeah. So the, the cat, you know, I was looking at things to put on the screen behind there and I was like, wow, let's put the Buildology logo on there. And then my son was helping set up the new studio and, and uh, Perry was talking about, hey, changing paint colors <laughs> earlier. I, uh, we got the new studio and uh, we went in here and painted and we were trying to find something to put on the screen there. It was kind of, you know, kind of cool. And I had the Buildology logo on there and he was like, dad, that that's so... That, that's so stale. It's just an image. He's like, there's things that you can do with technology that add some movement to it. And I was like, what? And the first thing that shows up, the cat. <laughs> so that's cool. He, cat. He, he pulls the cat up and I said, the cat's got to stay. But the problem is we haven't named the cat. So I was going to say we have to have a name for the cat. We have to name the cat. Oh, that's I the, see a suggestion box that happening exactly. already. Name yeah, the cat. Yeah. Yeah. Name, name the cat. So if you're listening to this as a podcast at some point, you'll have to flip over to YouTube to see the cat that we're talking about. So we're, we're going to have to, there's going to definitely be a winner of the cat name. Could, could we set it up to where whoever wins that, that your son could help us have the cat say the name and be animated oh, yeah, with it yeah, or yeah, something? Maybe so. He, he's oh, a, a pretty smart individual. So. Fun, fun. <laughs> I wish it was my cat and then I could try, train him to do a lot more things than just you know, look I, around. I have a cat that looks very similar to that, as a matter of fact. But he's oh. he's a miniature Siamese. His name is JJ. We named it after JJ Watt. Okay. But yet he weighs about three pounds. Oh, full man. grown. And he can he's too skittish though. I said we yeah. put him on the middle of the table but <laughs> he would run. He's getting afraid. the glasses is gonna be tough on him, huh? Yeah, that will be <laughs> a challenge. The, on the him. cat at my house, which is my son's cat that he didn't take when he moved out, yeah. all it's good at is just ripping your arms off. So it's just <laughs> it lives on its own and right. don't we all have those we're, pets? We're inside that are, its yeah. castle. Our yes. children left so I guess behind. we're not having pet day up here. Right? <laughs> no, 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 bring no, your pet to work. No, no. no pet needs. not gonna happen. So yeah. one of the things in the segments in the show that I thought would be super important, um, you know, we'll leave conjecture time about things that are happening, but one very specific thing that's happening in our industry that um, we need to all educate ourselves and our listeners on, um, because I've educated myself on after owning a Tesla 
and seeing how revolution and revolutionary that vehicle was. And as a home builder, you know, when we bought that, I, I plugged it in and it, it kind of dawned on me. I said, "Uh Oh, us as home builders, we're, we're behind the game. And, uh, what I mean by that is when I went to go plug the thing in, I, I wasn't a hundred percent prepared. So I'm a home builder and I was like, okay, I just need, you know, a 50 amp, you know, plug to go plug it in that that's all it's going to take. And if you think that, then that's not what it, what the idea of what changing this EV environment out in the automobile world is going to change the way that affects a home. And if you're an investor, that's a whole conversation. But Mac, you, you deal with the people buying a new home every single day. As we transition from the next five years to electric vehicles, what that impact is going to have on a house and the technologies that come with it. So there's a ton of technologies that that has spurred that is going to come into the home. And I'm not talking about the smart home stuff. I'm talking about how an electric vehicle is going to affect your house. So there's, you know, various technologies from, you know, really advanced HVAC systems, solar batteries in the house, all that we have to educate ourselves on and the the public out there as this changes and it's a huge industry. So you tell automobiles and housing, the two largest industries in the United States, right? And True. one of them's changing. And you know, I was, as I mentioned, I was traveling last week and I had a builder ask me about Tesla shingles on a mm -hmm. house. Right. And it's exactly what you described. They actually absorb the solar power. They're conserved into an energy pack yeah. and he had some name for it and yeah. it supplies the power for the house. Yeah. So, so it's coming. It, it's, it's coming. And then all the auto manufacturers, as they change how that technology changes, um, there's this thing out there called vehicle to grid. Um, that is going to work its way into the market. It's not going to be a next year thing, um, but it's probably in the next five year thing. And we need to start understanding what that is going to do in Intel. And it could create markets for if you're a new home builder, that we all remember the beta and VHS days, right? At some point, there's going to be a transition. There's going to be new homes on the market that are one way. And then there's going to be homes that are another way. And there's going to be a cost to retro those homes to kind of get them up to the standards of this new thing. And so you're going to find builders that are building new homes that are on top of their game and go one way with it. And you're going to find people that are flipping houses that if you're not considering the flip of, hey, this thing can be put into this house right now while I'm doing all this other stuff that fits a specific market, you may sell that house. I mean, the market for that is really, really hot. So you may sell that to a completely about back, how, how often do you compete with resales from a new home perspective? I mean, really all the time. Every I day? Mean, every single day. Every yeah. day. And, and when the realtors take, and you're looking at the price of your home, they compare on the CMAs. They look at what is the cost per square right. foot of the existing homes. If you're doing something new, like Justin's speaking of, mm -hmm. you separate yourself. Right. Yeah. You take yourself out of that arena. Right. Yeah. You, you've created a new market for yourself. And there's a lot of people that want to be in that market with very few product offerings. So we, we all know what that translates into as a sold home. And we've all seen, and, you know, in the last 15 years, we've seen how the government has stepped in and basically required of home builders certain. Uh, things like double pane windows, things yep. involving the energy. Um, I would not be surprised if we have yep. this coming up on the horizon. Yeah, and so well, every home builder's got to pay attention to. The flip side of that is is what is the key to avoiding the pitfall? Yeah, of we all know the technology's coming, and uh, electric is is here. It's uh, power's getting cheaper to create. It's it's uh, technologies there that can store for longer periods of time and take less energy to restore what you've used. That's coming. We all know it's coming. It's coming to the automobile industry right now, and it's coming fast and hard to them. It, it is coming to our industry. But at the same time, what is the key? What would be the key to a home builder to go in? That technology up front is not going to be inexpensive. It right. won't be, but it'll be really beneficial. The beneficial right. of that is really good. But the pitfall is going, you're dealing that, and you've got another part of your industry that is experiencing record highs in cost. Yeah. Do you avoid that? Do you, do you not consider 
catching that wave and, and being the forefront of, of how that's going to affect the industry. So there's pitfalls in, in, in not deciding not to look at that. And right. I think, yeah, that I think, I think mistake. what you, I get what you're saying. You're, you're, because you're scared that you have a high lumber price and this other thing may cause you to raise your price, Correct. right? If you raise your price, make you're it a fe- make right. it an option for, for the buyer that right. wants it. Make it a buyer right. and a customer choice. And that's the best, we've all seen that that's the best way to enter new products into a market is, is offer it as an option. So you're not forcing everybody to take it, but you've made it available for that select educated buyer and that one thing that, that wants it. But if you're not even offering it, you're missing that sale because your competitor right. is going to offer it. Right. Yep. Very true. That's the key. Yeah. I, I was once told a story about a gentleman that two brothers, one bought a Mercedes and one bought a Lexus, and they were talking about the 14 karat gold inflators into the airbag. And the gentleman that bought the Lexus said, that's the reason I purchased it, because mm-hmm. it, it was a better quality product. I knew that it was going to inflate. What the gentleman selling the Mercedes didn't share with his customer is – it's required by the United States government that every air inflator has yeah. a 14 karat gold tip on it. Wow. But all he did was point out what was already there. Because yeah. again, as you stated before, yeah. everyone can make it available, but if you're not talking about it and you're not making it as an option and providing it to the customer, you lose. Yeah. yeah. Mac, you brought up the, the point um, that you were talking about. One of those changes that kind of go hand in hand with that is energy efficiency. We've all seen that run through our industry, you know, Back in the 90s, when we mm-hmm. first heard of an energy efficient home, we're like, what is an energy efficient home? I thought they all yeah, you just. All it had was a programmable uh, thermostat. Yeah, back exactly. In the 90s. That, was, yeah. Yeah. that made yeah. it an that, energy that, that was the energy it star was called home, energy right? Star. right. Yeah. <laughs> that was the first thing is putting in that programmable, uh, programmable yeah. thermostat. But you know, it all started there with the building code, the government basically mm-hmm. Bingo. bringing a code and pushing us as builders to get more efficient. You know, they don't want to put another coal fired power plant into the grid they would rather just make us all use less and that's that's a cheaper solution and so as we transition to electric that's a big portion of it and if you understand energy efficiency i mean we've kind of done it from we've the lived gig. it we've lived it yeah. right and we've seen how spray foam has changed the industry like i did you know spray ho- foams houses when they first came out and no one could afford that. It was like a solar panel. If it was like a $20,000 premium and you would never get that back in the energy savings, but there was a certain market that just said, Hey, that's really efficient. I want to do it. Allow me to do it. And you know, we worked at a builder at the time that allowed people to do it and we gained sales off of that. That's true. But now it, there's not a premium to being energy efficient. There's levels of energy efficiency. And so mm-hmm. people buy into an energy efficient home. It is more efficient than a house built in the 70s. It's Absolutely. just a fact, right? Absolutely. But today we have levels of energy efficiency that you could buy into. You know, what is that builder doing to get to the max? You know, is he trying to build a house that's you know, off the grid, <laughs> you know, that, that's an option. There's builders out there that said, okay, you know, there's enough solar panels, there's enough battery backup, you know, the electric company is just your backup. You and, know, there's a, and there's a point, Justin, uh, what I talk about when customers want to start talking about energy efficiency, uh, there's the point of diminishing returns. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and there's a balance that you, you yep. hit at some point yep. Where you can always do more, you can be negative. You can actually be putting power back into the grid, right? Uh, but at what cost? I, I see it all the time um, when people want to they chase after. Hey, they want to do this one thing. This one thing may cost them five thousand dollars and save them ten dollars a month. I'm like, well, you know, the payback on that doesn't right. even make sense for you to do. You're going to sell a house in seven years, so <laughs> why why even mess with that? You know, in educating buyers and investors on that type of thing. But there's plenty of smaller energy efficient things that you can do to fit that market and understanding that, that the buyer wants it. The market the determines key. it. That's the key. You said it before. What's in it for me? That's the radio station. Yep. Dial it in. Yep. So ask him, what, ask that buyer, what's the most important goal you're trying to accomplish? If it's lower monthly payment today on the utility bill, then maybe that's the factor. If it's I'm going to be here 10 years, so I don't mind paying a little bit extra into my mortgage instead of paying out of my pocket and just letting that be absorbed on a monthly basis to my utility bills. It's what's important to you. What's your ultimate goal? Yeah. Why is it important to you? And, you know, another thing, too, is that when you're looking at, uh, from an investor standpoint, when you're looking at product design, you know, what's what's in it for the investor? Well, they're right. going to be looking at 
uh, ease of maintenance. They're going to look at the things that are going to be important to the renters and the people that are going to be leasing their, their properties. And, you know, another great example of that is a product that you and Randy have been involved in uh, is having, you know, flooring that is very yeah. durable. All right. I mean, can you can you t- speak to that? Yeah, I think, you know, as we look at products um, in the segments, I, I think having a product, uh, a second product segment would be super important. And then we can get very specific and say, hey, this product here fits this very, this kind of niche market, like as a durability or a design type of product. And then another product segment that's talking about, hey, how does this help the process of home building in some deal? So one could be like a consumer type deal. This would be a good product in a home and a trend that's going on and something that we see that's, that's changing. And that happens all the time in our industry. I mean, yeah. you know, wood look tile. I, I mean, I mm-hmm. did that. One of the first wood looks when the tile company came to me and there was four selections. <laughs> I was like, wow, that's really cool. I think that would be a very good thing. You know, built a model with right. it. And now it's the predominant floor that's being asked sure. for. But think about it too. Mm-hmm. Think about the, the dynamic changing of the family unit. Now there's an animal involved. We talked about the cow. We talked about dogs. Talk about flooring. Talk about the durability. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, that's key. When you talk about... We've even know, talked about the cat. Yes, exactly. <laughs> the cat, too. That cat that has no name. So in <laughs> yeah. the comments in below, the, put yeah, your suggestions. Yeah, put the name. I feel yeah. bad for the but cat. <laughs> you talk about energy efficient or efficiencies in general. Right. Uh, a lot of that... And in, in we'll, we'll, we'll get into our product selection discussion you know, in, in later shows. But if you think about just the... Even the... It, if there's a selection you can do that makes the building go together more efficiently type thing. Yes. So meaning that it's a shorter time to do, right. take Corian countertops for an example. Mm-hmm. Uh, I worked at a builder first one in Houston to put them in as a standard, but now there wasn't any rock cutting. People were doing all the granite back then. And so there was no more rock cutting. This was a man-made product that was made. It was made faster, cheaper, and more efficient. That in turn added to the overall efficiency of the construction industry. If I had a segment for, for Kanye's Better, faster, stronger. <laughs> Better, faster, stronger. <laughs> so, guys, I, I think uh, for our first podcast episode, I think we, we, we did a pretty good job of highlighting where we want to go, who we are and whatnot. But uh, I think our time's about at an end here. So as, uh, as we tell people, the help the show out, what we need them to do is like, um, put a comment down below, hit the subscribe button. There's a little bell icon and Upper left corner, upper, yeah, upper right corner, I think, of the screen. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that part out where that bell icon is. But I think that, I've always heard, hit the like, subscribe, and hit the bell. There you go. So what those do, the like button gives us an opportunity to get, sub, you know, as, as recommended to someone else. The subscribe button makes it easier for you to find us. And then the bell icon, every time we put a new video out, it's going to just come right to you. So you don't have to go searching for it. So those are really important. And it helps us in the YouTube a logarithm however you say it some people say algorithm some people say a logarithm i don't know they'll comment they'll correct me in the comments i'm sure it's yeah, this probably. way yeah it's kind of <laughs> like that ha- that hashtag thing i always called it the number sign and i heard it i called it the pound sign because the pound sign that's <laughs> what i called yeah. the pound yeah, sign yeah, it was like no it's a hashtag dad uh nope that's uh that was before every phone number <laughs> that's all i well, know if i can add something to it, justin you uh-huh. talked about subscribing a lot of the information that we're going to share can be sent out to you sent out to the consumer or to the listener in checklist, it can yeah. be in pamphlets, it can be in yep. emails, any number of things. The only way we can get back to them with their answers yep. is if they subscribe. Yep. They've That's got it. to give That's us right. access. Well, and if, if you happen to be a sponsor or know someone who would be a, a sponsor who could benefit from, from this type of uh, program, we'd love to hear from them as well. Yep. Well, thank you guys. Yep. I think it was a, a, a good episode. And uh, so the number one thing is we're going to be doing this every week. So look for us every le- week and we'll carve them up into smaller, to easier to consume little five, 10 minute bits uh, during the week. And so you don't miss it. But, uh, you know, every Wednesday. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Take care. Very good. Thank you. You've been listening to the Buildology Podcast. 
We have home building down to a science. Perry, Randy, Mac, and Justin have over 100 years experience in the building and real estate industry. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information from the show. And we hope you had fun along the way. We know we did. Make sure to pass on our YouTube channel to others. The Buildologist. Take care, and we'll see you again soon.